It's hump day, Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. Let's begin our devotion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears me. He hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we continue in the um, book of Hebrews. We're now in chapter 4. Again, you've heard me maybe express some questions or frustrations with how um, the people who design or or pick these um, readings, um, I don't think, always do the greatest job. We continue really um, on the thought we had um, from last time. It, It continues from that, this idea of rest and uh, those people in the wilderness, uh, those Israelites, how they rejected God's rest by not trusting him. We're continuing with that theme uh, very directly, and that it's just a continuation of that. So, But now we're in, uh, again, chapter 4, and it's verses 1 to 16. So let's, it's a longer reading, so let's jump in. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest, God's rest, still stands, let us... Fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. Right? This rest for the Israelites and for you and I is is a gift. For the Israelites, it was a rest of, of being in the promised land. For you and us, it's a rest that comes from the freedom from slavery to sin. Uh, it's a gift given to us. The only way we can lose it is to refuse it. Um And we do that in part by putting our trust in other things and refusing to trust God, like the Israelites did when they didn't trust him um, to enable them to enter and conquer the promised land. So this problem, this offer, but this risk uh, still stands for you and me today. We never lose this gift of rest, the gift of sin, by forces outside of us. Um, all of the attacks from Satan and the world and all of that stuff, um, it's not taken away by them. It's us who run the risk of refusing it. And that's what he's concerned about here. Verse 2, for good news, we know what that is, right? Freedom um, through Jesus Christ. For the Israelites, it was freedom through Moses, who was a precursor to Christ, came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. So we had division amongst the people of God. And those who didn't have the faith, who were not united by faith, lost that gift. Unfortunately, with the Israelites, um, you know, there were a lot of um, casualties to this. Verse 3, For we who have believed, enter that rest. As he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. And again, we pull in now this Sabbath rest, the seventh day in which God rested after completing his work, uh, which is the rest that's offered in uh, the command Um, to remember the Sabbath day um, that's ultimately fulfilled in Jesus Christ who rested in the tomb um, and now offers it to us for eternity. Verse 4, For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from his works. And again, in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. That's Psalm 95. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. So now 
again, this connection between what happened, and we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, right? Where um, we're, we're drawing these comparisons and we're making these connections between the Israelites failing to trust God in terms of entering the promised land to us and the struggle to trust God to enter into his rest found in salvation. And this is a, you know, this is a rest that's not just something that's a carrot dangling at the end of uh, the stick, right, for us when we die. It's a rest that's real to us today. You know, where we, this is kind of where I was going with my sermon last weekend, that where we, we struggle to achieve and to earn through all of the busyness and the things we do today and we beat ourselves up and, and others beat us up because we don't do enough or we don't do it right. Um, the rest that comes in the gospel is, is the rest that comes from God saying, I have done it all for you and I forgive you. That's a rest that comes with the peace of knowing God's love that can be yours and mine today, not just when we die and go to heaven. Okay, uh, verse 7. Again, he appoints a certain day, today. Uh, and quote, today, saying through David so long afterward, uh, in the words already quoted, today if your heart, if you hear his voice, do not Harden your hearts. Um, verse 8 For if Joshua had given them rest, now there's a comparison between Joshua and Jesus, which uh, in the same root is the same name, uh, Yeshua. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest, enjoying the result of God's completed work in creation, in salvation, that completed work, has also rested from his works as God did from his. Verse 11, now there's a shift. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest. Now, how do you and I strive to enter that rest? Remember your baptism. Um, renounce your sins, repent of your failures, trust in God's mercy. And this is something you and I can do every day through our baptism. Strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. How do you fall? You separate yourself from God, from his church, from his word, from his gifts. For as for the word of God, uh, you'll recognize this passage. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and, uh, and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So this word of God that is living and active, Isaiah says it, it always, when God sends it out, it never fails to accomplish that which God purposes it to do. And what is the work of God's word? Well, it's to cut to the heart of who we have, deeper than any um, physical sword, to cut at the heart of who we are, to convict us of our sins, but also to bring rest, to bring forgiveness, life, and salvation. Verse 14, since then we have a great high priest. Now, what, what's, a, what's a, the role of a priest? The role of the priest is, in a sense, a, a go-between. As a pastor, I, I fulfill this role in part, right? I represent the people to God, and I speak on behalf of and represent God to the people. The ultimate high priest, of course, is Jesus Christ himself, who destroys and bridges that divide. We have a great high priest, Jesus, who has passed through the heavens, who bridges that gap. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let's cling to it. Cling to him. Um, I tend to not be a huge fan of contemporary Christian music, uh, but there was one from the 90s. Uh, I always love the, the, the twist of the words. Um, they would talk about a bridge to cross the great divide 
between us and God? And then they would flip that and they would say, the cross to bridge the great divide. I always thought that was a neat play on words. That's what Jesus does for us. In verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, right? Jesus was fully human, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. He did what we cannot. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. That, that mercy seat, which in the Old Testament was the Ark of the Covenant, um, that becomes Jesus Christ, that becomes now, uh, that comes in the presence of, of our worship space even today. Let's draw near to Jesus. And he finishes then the last part of verse 16, that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in time of need and rest, true rest, rest and peace. Uh, that as, as I say at the end of sermons often, that transcends understanding, that transcends our circumstances and the demands of our day. Let's find those things, and I pray that you do today in Jesus. Let's continue. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.